So today's video is going to be another solved true crime case. Today we're going to be talking about a very recent case from London. So I just want to give you guys a quick reminder in the start of this video. I know I don't need to give you it because you're all super lovely people anyway, but please just make sure you're being extra respectful in the comment section. This is something super fresh for this family still to this day. I know you guys will be super respectful in the comments. I know I don't even need to say it. But before we get into this video, I just want to thank our sponsor for making this video possible, Magellan TV. Magellan TV is a documentary streaming service with over 3,000 thousand different documentaries to choose from on a range of subjects including space, science, war, earth and nature, history and of course true crime. One of the main reasons why I personally love Magellan TV is if you've been into true crime as long as I have you're probably a bit tired of all the same cases being recycled, all the same cases getting documentaries made on them which is all well and good we all love a good documentary but when you've already heard the case a million times it can get a little bit repetitive, but not Magellan TV. They cover so many cases that I've never heard of and I would never have heard of if it wasn't for them. Cases from so many different countries, you know, smaller ones that don't get the same publicity as a lot of the big ones. Don't get me wrong, they do have some of the big ones like Charles Manson. I think they've done one on Dennis Nielsen as well, but they've also got a bunch that I bet you've never heard of. For example, I watched a documentary on there a couple of weeks ago that I haven't stopped thinking about called The Alps Murders, and it's a bit of a heart-wrenching one. It's about a British family that were murdered in the French Alps. Well, half of the family were murdered. Two children were actually spared and they survived the attack and they actually hid with their parents' bodies for eight hours until they were found. It stuck with me for about a month now, I think it's been since I watched it, so I do recommend that one. Magellan TV update their programs weekly, so there's always something new for you to watch. It's completely ad-free and you can watch it on pretty much any device that you have, so what are you waiting for? They're running a limited time offer right now where you can get 30% off of an annual membership, making it only $3.50 a month, plus a two-week free trial. $3.50 a month plus two weeks free. That's insane. So if you want to take advantage of that, you can use the link down below in the description of this video. Do it, do it, do it. You won't regret it. Thanks again to Magellan TV for sponsoring this video. Quickly, before we get into this video, I just want to give my usual disclaimer that I mean absolutely no disrespect to anyone that I talk about in this video. This video is for educational purposes and everything that I'm about to say is just information that I have found on the internet and I'm compiling into one video. Tashan Daniel was born on September 22nd, 1999. He was a 20 year old aspiring athlete from West London. He was described as a wonderful, loving person by the people that knew him best. He had a younger sister named Oceana and she says that they were more like best friends rather than brother and sister. She said that he was a real inspiration to her. He was described by his father as a fantastic person. He was well respected by everyone and he was just so proud of his son. He especially mentions the fact that to Sean, when he was in like college or sixth form, he would often take an extra lunch with him or money for an extra lunch because there was one kid that was younger than him that couldn't afford food every day. So Tashan would make sure that this kid ate every day. That's just the kind of guy that he was. His parents brought him up with those kind of morals that, you know, he cares for people. He's a very caring, loving human being. Like I said before, Tashan was an aspiring athlete. He was a very, very talented runner. I think he special specialized in 200 meter sprints. I believe his end goal was to be in the Olympics one day and his sister had every faith in him that he could do that. He went to Hillingdon Athletic Club in West London. He trained like four or five times a week. He was so dedicated to his passions. He was also very passionate about photography as well. He took it in sixth form. I think that was kind of what his main focus was in school. And then when he left school, he actually got a job as a fashion photographer. He was particularly very passionate about fashion and London life. He was also a huge fan of football. He supported Arsenal Football Club literally all his life. His parents said that he had like shirts and pencil cases and just everything was Arsenal merch. He actually went to his first football game when he was just five years old. And imagine, he must have been tiny. His parents said that he actually 
actually had to stand on the seat to be able to see what he was watching. And for his 20th birthday, Tashan actually bought himself a little bit of a present. He got himself tickets to go and see Arsenal compete against Nottingham Forest in the EFL Cup. This game was on September 24th, 2019, just two days after Tashan's birthday. And he and his friend were due to go to Emirates Stadium and watch it. But first, that morning, Tashan had a few different things on his to-do list. He first took his grandfather to a daycare centre taster session. I believe he had a physiotherapy session at one point, And then he went for lunch with his mother before finally returning home to help his father with something on the computer. At this point, he was kind of running late because he had to be at this football game or at least meet his friend for like half past three. He was running late so he was trying to get his Arsenal t-shirt on as he was trying to help his dad on the computer and eventually he had to leave. He couldn't hang about any second longer. So he ruffled his father's hair, gave him a kiss on the cheek, said goodbye and he went off to go and meet his friend to go to the football game. Their plan was to catch the tube in Hillingdon Station in West London all the way to Emirates Stadium which I believe is in North London. So the two of them made their way to the eastbound platform and there they just stood and waited for their train. But as they were standing there, they were kind of in conversation and then Tashan turns and he sees the opposite platform. And there he made eye contact with two other guys that were on this other platform who were around his age and they took this eye contact in some kind of an offensive way and they shouted over to Tashan over these railway tracks saying, what are you looking at? What are you looking at? They were immediately confrontational and angry over literally nothing. And Tashan, just as anyone else would, he found this ridiculous. And so he shouted back over to the men, be quiet and just get on your train. He wasn't looking for a fight. He was looking to just stop this weird confrontation. Why were these guys so angry at him for making eye contact with them? But these men did not like the fact that Tashan talked back to them, stood up for himself. They didn't like it so much that they decided this was gonna turn into a confrontation. So the two men got up from where they were sitting, they walked up the stairwell, across the footbridge, across the railway tracks, and then down the stairs to where Tashan and his friend were waiting for their train. They literally walked this whole way so that they could go over and square up to Tashan and intimidate him and make him scared. And as they did, a physical fight broke out between Tashan and his friend and these other two guys. So because there were kind of two on each team, it kind of split into two separate fights. Tashan versus one guy and his friend versus the other guy's friend. And Tashan and his friend just do not understand what they've done wrong, literally. All they did was kind of defend themselves from this weird little confrontation and all of a sudden it had to be a physical fight. Tashan was just trying to defend himself. He was actually trying to break up this fight at first. They were just defending themselves against this unprovoked attack. And it was then when the guy that was fighting Tashan actually pulled out a blade. But this blade was more than just any old knife. It was called an Aviator One assault knife. It's worth like 250 pound. It's a really incredibly sharp, strong knife that's only used for like the most toughest of things. It can cut through laminate glass. It's used in like the military. It's that kind of weapon. It's not an everyday weapon that you would see in a shop. And this guy that was fighting Tashan produced this knife and plunged it straight into his chest, the full way. This full 15 centimeter blade goes straight into Tashan's heart. And of course, in that moment, this whole altercation took a drastic turn. This was more than just a fight now. This guy had just dealt Tashan a potentially fatal injury. These two men knew that they were in way too deep. And as soon as they realized what had happened, they upped and ran straight back up the stairs, straight through the tube station and out into the street. They just fled the scene. Some witnesses that spoke to police in the aftermath of this say that as these men were running through the station, they were actually laughing about what had just happened. Anyway, back to Tashan, who has been stabbed and is just on this train platform. I believe as soon as he was stabbed, he fell to the floor, he kind of collapsed. But due to the amount of adrenaline that was pumping through his body at this moment, he was able to kind of pick himself up. And I think he was trying to hide himself in case these men came back. And he managed to stagger onto the train that was now there 
and he collapsed in the doorway of the train. You can even see it in the CCTV footage, which I don't think I'm actually gonna put this section of it in because it is quite graphic, so I'll just describe it to you. But when he staggered onto this train carriage, he was followed by this pool of blood, this huge trail of blood. He was bleeding so badly and I don't think he quite realized how badly he was injured due to all this adrenaline you probably wouldn't feel that much pain. Witnesses managed to call the emergency services and paramedics were on their way in so many different forms, like driven ambulances were coming, an air ambulance was dropping in. Someone else also managed to get in contact with Tashan's family who were also on their way at this point. When they arrived, the whole tube station was being evacuated and police almost didn't let them down. They had to like, try and explain to them that I think that's my son down there, I think my son is dying. Eventually when they were let through, the family ran straight down the stairwell where Tashan was still laying on the ground in the exact place that he'd been stabbed, he'd been brought off of this train carriage now and he was being treated by so many paramedics, they were just desperately trying to stop the bleeding and trying to keep his heart pumping. His father said that on their way to the tube station and as they were running through all these stairs and all these corridors, he was desperately hoping that this had been a case of mistaken identity, that this wasn't actually Tashan that had been stabbed, it might have been someone else. But as he got closer, as he started running down this stairwell, he saw his son's face, that was unmistakably Tashan. His mother Celia ran over to him and begged the paramedics to just let her near him, you know, let her hold his hand or touch his face or anything. They did for a brief second, she was holding his hand, she was stroking his face, giving him kisses, telling him she loved him, but eventually paramedics just needed all the space that they could get, this was so serious and so they had to ask his mother to step to the side while they continued trying to resuscitate her son. His younger sister Oceana was watching the whole thing I think, I believe from the top of the stairwell, I think she was kind of higher up than everyone else, she didn't run down to the scene, but eventually a paramedic from the air ambulance pulled Tashan's family aside and said, look we've done absolutely everything we can, his heart has been stopped now for almost 20 minutes and he's gone. This was just all so sudden for the Daniel family. I can't imagine how it must feel to have kissed your son goodbye and within 20 minutes you're being called to a tube station because he's fighting for his life and then he's gone. You know, it's all just so sudden. He was on his way to a football game, something he was looking forward to, something he loved with all his heart and then he was murdered. His life was stolen on his way there. It didn't take police very long to be able to identify two suspects based on descriptions from witnesses, CCTV footage from the tube station. The first man was 19 year old Jonathan Camille and the man that actually stabbed Tashan Daniel was 23 year old Alex Lanning, a man that was actually very well known to police. He was a known drug dealer. He'd been in trouble for all sorts of things like that, crimes relating to drugs, general violence charges, fights, all this kind of stuff, possession, dealing. But at the time of Tashan's murder, Lanning was actually out on license for another stabbing. A couple of years prior, he'd actually stabbed someone else in the chest 11 times. I believe it was a client, someone that he was trying to sell drugs to. This happened in Brighton as well. I don't know why he was in Brighton. As far as I'm aware, that victim actually survived and recovered from those 11 stab wounds, which is insane. But he was literally on license for that exact same thing when he stabbed Tashan. I believe he was actually charged with attempted murder of that other guy in Brighton. And it's just so heartbreaking that if he'd just been charged properly for that attempted murder, I mean, 11 stab wounds in the chest should have had way more time in prison than he actually got because he was given four years and he actually served less than two of those. He was released in 2018, just a year before he went on to stab Tashan. If he'd have just been sentenced to more time, or at least, at the very least, been made to serve that full sentence, he wouldn't have been out. He wouldn't have been able 
to be anywhere near Tasha and Daniel. This would have never happened. So anyway, police kind of identified these two suspects and they were able to follow them on CCTV footage right from the moment of the murder. Well, actually before that, when they actually entered the tube station before any of this had happened, but they were able to follow them from the moment of the murder. They get them running out of the station and then them just running down so many different streets, past loads of shops, just trying to escape the scene until eventually they reached this housing estate. And it was there where they hid the murder weapon. They hid this knife under some loose flagstones in the floor. They then stole some towels off of someone's washing line, put them over their heads in an attempt to disguise themselves hide their face and their hair. And some sources even say that they got rid of the clothes that they were wearing, because maybe there was blood on them or whatever. And then they stole some lady's floral pajamas from her washing line and wore those. Not sure on that one, but I did read it in a couple of sources, so. And then from there, the two men, Camille and Lanning, just went on the run for two weeks. They were sleeping rough on the streets, just desperately, trying not to get found by police. It didn't last very long because 10 days later, they were finally captured in central London. They were arrested and brought to the police station. So Alex Lanning, in his interview, he desperately tried to argue that this hadn't been intentional. You know, he hadn't meant to kill Tashan when he stabbed him in the heart. But at the end of the day, if you're carrying a weapon as brutal as the Aviator One assault knife, what else are your intentions with that knife? Of course you're taking that out to cause some serious harm to someone. I really doubt he was taking it out to cut up laminate glass, you know? But actually the question should be, why is he carrying a knife at all if he didn't intend on harming someone or killing someone? Why would you need to possibly carry a knife around with you? But especially the most brutal, sharp thing on the market as well, I mean, of course you're taking that out with that intention. When he was asked how he actually obtained such a unique and dangerous weapon, Alex Lanning actually told the police that he got it off of the set of Fast and Furious 9 because he was working on the film set. So police got in touch with the production company of that film and they said, absolutely not. We don't have those on set. They said if they were to have weapons like that on set, they would only be from two manufacturers. They only buy from two separate manufacturers and this knife was made by neither of those. And also if it was gonna be used in the film or if it was gonna be a prop, then all knives, all weapons for that matter are blunt. They're not actually sharp because you know, obvious safety reasons. So he obviously didn't get it from this film set. It's actually never been found where he got this knife from, probably just bought it somewhere. But he said that he stole it from that set as memorabilia of his time working on that film. Why are you carrying it then? Why are you actually carrying it around London? In the trial, Alex Lenning said that he killed Tashan Daniel by accident. He said that it was supposed to just be a fight. He was supposed to just be, you know, standing his ground, making himself look tough. But then in the heat of the moment, things got out of control and he pulled this knife to defend himself. And for that exact reason, Lanning actually tried to get a manslaughter plea because it hadn't been his intention to kill Tashan. You know, it was an accident. Of course that didn't work out for him. The jury did not believe that for a second. He took that knife out that day with the intention of using it to seriously harm, if not kill someone. So he was eventually found guilty of murder and Alex Lanning was sentenced to life in prison with a minimum of 25 years. Jonathan Camille, on the other hand, actually successfully argued a manslaughter plea. He said that he had no idea that Alex Lanning actually had that knife on him that day. He said that had he known his friend had this super dangerous weapon on him, that he wouldn't have let him fight. Camille said that it was never his intention for someone to die. He was just joining in this fight with his friend. He just wanted to have a fight. And whether you believe Jonathan Camille or not is completely up to you. I mean, did he really not know that his friend had this super dangerous weapon on him? I feel like that's something they probably would have talked about at some point. But anyway, the jury believed him and so he was given the manslaughter plea. And for that, he will only serve six and a half years in prison 
Although it'll probably be less than that, let's be honest. Both men have actually since tried to appeal their convictions, appeal their sentences, neither of which was successful. They're still serving those same sentences they were given. One of the main reasons why this appeal wasn't successful was because at no point during any of this have either of these men shown any real remorse. They tried everything in their power to avoid justice. They ran away from the scene, they disguised themselves with towels, hid the murder weapon, literally went on the run, slept rough on the streets for nearly two weeks. They were willing to go homeless for two weeks to avoid getting caught for this. And that is why there's no lenience here. That is why their appeals were not picked up because why should they be? Tashan's murder has deeply, deeply affected so many people. I watched a bunch of interviews in preparation for this video and they were the most heart-wrenching things to watch because you can literally feel his friends and family's pain in their voices. His younger sister, Oceana, says she's never been able to go to Hillingdon tube station since his murder. And that's their local tube station. So she has to go out of her way by like 30 minutes to be able to travel anywhere by tube. She says she doesn't think she'll ever be able to go back there. And even just driving past the tube station gives her chills and that must be the most awful reminder ever to literally live so close to where her brother was murdered. I believe Oceana actually took up athletics herself and she is determined to do well and do Tashan proud. His best friend, Leon, they'd been best friends, Leon says, since they were like babies, since they were born. They'd been best friends all the way through school, literally all their lives. And he actually has a chain with a cross on that is made with Tashan's ashes so that he can take him everywhere with him, keep him close. Oceana as well actually has a charm for a Pandora bracelet made with Tashan's ashes. So again, she can take him everywhere. And Leon says that still to this day, it hasn't sunk in for him that his best friend is gone. He says that he always writes him messages in the notes in his phone, you know, just kind of updating him on his life, asking for advice sometimes. He just wants to feel like he's talking to Tashan. And sometimes he thinks of like the advice that he would give him in certain situations. And something that really, really broke my heart was a particular interview that Leon did where he said that he's actually tried to call Tashan on the phone a few times since he was murdered, just kind of out of force of habit because they spoke every single day. And he says that the line just cuts off and then he remembers. In his memory, Tashan Daniel's friends and family are trying to get the Hillingdon Athletics Stadium renamed to the Tashan Daniels Stadium. That is the stadium where he used to train four or five times a week. Like he had so much potential to be such a powerful athlete. And they actually have a petition to get it renamed. So I'll link that down below. If you have a couple of seconds just to go and click it, put in your details. I'm sure they would appreciate the backing so much. Tashan Daniel's father has particularly campaigned for more stop and searches to take place and perhaps tighter rules when it comes to parole because those are two of the reasons why this was able to happen. Had Alex Lanning had proper parole after his attempted murder charge, then this probably wouldn't have happened. Had Alex Lanning been stopped and searched on his way to the tube station, the knife would have been confiscated. Again, this wouldn't have happened. His family and friends have campaigned tirelessly to end knife crime in the UK, which is such a huge problem, especially in London. They campaign, they protest, they've set up petitions. They even have a fund, which I'll link down below. And again, if you have anything spare to donate to them, I'm sure it would be very, very much appreciated. But that is all I have for this video. Thank you so, so much for watching. Just a quick reminder of the links that are down in the description, the petition and a link to donate. Please, please, please use them if you can. Thanks again to Magellan TV for sponsoring this video. Remember right now they're running a limited time offer where you can get 30% off of an annual membership, making it just $3.50 a month plus a two week free trial. Two weeks free and it's $3.50 a month. Don't miss out. You can use the link down below in the description to go and get that offer. Huge thank you to all of my channel members for helping me decide the cases that I cover, especially my tier two members whose names are all on screen right now. If you wanna become a channel member, you can just click the join button on a desktop or there'll be a link in the description of this video. But yeah, thank you so, so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed, please leave a thumbs up down below cause that'd really help me out. If you wanna see more content like this, I do videos like this all the time. You can subscribe using this link right here 
here. If you want a link to my second channel, you can subscribe to that one right here. I make a lot more like light hearted content on there. And if you want to watch another true crime video, there'll be a playlist on screen right now.